Florida Marquis, haven't you seen? Haven't you heard? They just had another election in Venezuela, and it is clear beyond the shadow of a doubt that the evil, terrible, horrible socialist Nicolas Maduro stole the election, and blah, blah. Why aren't you saying anything, Marquis? You know you're caught. I can't tell you how many comments I have gotten in the last week or so from people who are so ridiculously misinformed and myopic that they can't see the truth right in front of their face. All of a sudden now, all of a sudden now, Washington, D.C., and the mainstream media, and big oil, and billionaires are their friends. And anything they say is the gospel truth. It is fascinating how people can go from distrusting the media, distrusting the government, distrusting billionaires, to all of a sudden thinking that these people are pure and innocent as the wind-driven snow, and this man, a bus driver, and his predecessor, a soldier, are the enemies of everyone everywhere on the planet, and oh, we would all just be so much better off if this leader of this one country of 30 million people, he would just step aside, all of a sudden the clouds would roll away and sunshine would shine and the bluebirds would sing and it's ridiculous. If there were ever a psychological operation, a black hat psychological operation going on, it is the one going on about Venezuela. They want their oil. It's just that simple. The billionaires, Washington, D.C., Big Oil, and their allies in the mainstream media want to take over a country and steal its gold and steal its oil. And so they make believe all sorts of things and then report it to you as if it's true and then people parrot it. It's just the most amazing thing. But I have a question for you. How many of you really think the founding fathers of this country weren't socialists. You see, back then, that was the main opposition to the crown. They weren't even for voting. You had to be white, Christian, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, male, and a landowner to even be considered to be allowed to register for vote voting, pardon me, for president. Let me say this again. White, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, Christian Protestant, male, and a landowner to be able to vote. You think these people cared about democracy? You think these people cared? You're delusional. But of course, battlefield of the mind, this is what we do. Psychological Operations 101, when people attach an emotion to a belief, it is virtually impossible, unless you remove the emotion, to change their mind, to show them where they got it wrong. Because if you try to do it and don't address the emotionality of it, you are then according to them, attacking them personally because you're attacking their feelings. You're attacking their little feely feels. Now, if you would like to, pardon me one second, if you would like to join us at the Florida Marquis Patreon channel, where we specifically talk about the 24 logical fallacies, the 24 cognitive biases, and psychological operations and how they're done, we would love to have you over there. They don't allow anybody in the military, just anybody, to sign up for intelligence or psyops training. You have to go through a series of tests, a battery of tests, and you have to pass all of them. And even then, even then, if you qualify to begin training, the vast majority of people who begin training don't make it through. By the time they get a cadre of people on the other end who've made it through all the training, compared to the amount of people that started, it's a tiny, tiny fraction. How many of you remember? Anyway, real quick. $1 a month, $1 a month, even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked. Florida Marquis, I can't believe you're talking in such negative terms about the founding of our country. 
the founding of our country was started based on a riot where a bunch of men who didn't like the fact that the taxes being levied on tea were going to England instead of staying here, decided to trespass on a ship that wasn't theirs and then take all the tea and throw it overboard, the Boston Tea Party. They were mad because they couldn't keep the tax money. They weren't against taxes. They were mad because the tax money was going to England, even though it was English ships and English tea, and they were selling the tea here in the New World. And there were taxes that weren't staying here. That's what started all of it. And it all happened in Boston, and it had nothing to do with the people of South Carolina, nothing to do with the people of North Carolina, nothing to do with the people of Virginia, nothing to do with many, many, many people. But many Virginians, North Carolina, Carolinians, and South Carolinians died for that argument over taxes. Now, it gets even better. How many of you remember those of you, Florida Monkey, capitalism, rising tide, lifts all boats, blah, blah, blah. Really? Did it lift the uh, lift the boats of the banks back in 2008? Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that, Florida Maki. The $700 billion giant socialist check that became trillions of dollars in socialist checks that the government wrote to big businesses because they were too big to fail. If that hadn't happened, if that hadn't happened, you know what would what would be the reality right now? People like to laugh at me and make fun of this channel because I talk about something going on that nobody wants to talk about. There would be women tripping over themselves, thinking it was the best day ever if they could find someone somewhere who had enough money and a car to give them enough money for a roll in the hay. You think inflation's bad? You think inflation is bad now? There's money. And there are things on the shelves in the grocery store. Yes, they're expensive. You know what the other option is? Do you know what happens when deflation happens? There aren't things to buy in the grocery store. And when they show up, they're cheap. Imagine, imagine bread being a dollar a loaf. And you don't, you got 85 cents to spend on food. That's what's going to happen. This will be a luxury, not for the men, not for the men, but for the women in this country. You mark my words, it's coming. Those of you who think you aren't living in a socialist country, those of you who think that your know, socialism comes to America, that's it, it don't, you live in a socialist country, you just don't know about it. Richard T. Eli, we have among us a class of mammon worshipers whose one test of conservatism, you see, there was a time, not so very long ago, that you could be a Christian, conservative, socialist. You could be a Christian, nationalist, conservative, socialist. All four of those things all went together. Test of conservatism or radicalism is the attitude one takes with respect to accumulated wealth, Whatever tends to preserve the wealth of the wealthy is called conservatism. And whatever favors anything else is called socialism, no matter what it is. It's idol worship. It's idol worship. See, I show this picture because I know it gets a lot of women with their nose bent out of joint. Florida monkey, I would be poor first. I would live on the street first. Okay. We're going to test that theory out here pretty quick. How many of you saw how many trillions were wiped off the stock market? Let's see. Put your money where your mouth is, or whatever else where your mouth is, so to speak. Capitalism versus socialism, and everybody wants to fight on worship. You mark my words, and don't sit out there and say, not me, not me. If we were financing this country on the revenues of oil pumped out of the ground, there wouldn't be one peep about socialism is evil and terrible and capitalism is great. The reason people in this country have such a bad taste in their mouth because of socialism is because it has been done on the backs of taxpayers. Do you think that's what goes on in, in Venezuela? No, absolutely not. 
People are like, I'm not going to pay pay for this person not to work, and I'm not going to pay for this social program, and not my money. If the money was coming from the United States government, getting rid of all the big oil companies, taking over all the oil production, bringing that stuff out of the ground, putting it on the open market, and then the revenue going right into our coffers to pay for things, nobody would have a problem with socialism. How many of you out there have said in the last week or two, we need we need to fix the Secret Service. We need to have a better Secret Service. We need more training. We need more people because we almost lost Donald Trump and I would have been the end. How many of you have caught anyone saying that? Where do you think that money is going to come from? Where do you think the money for all that fixing this Secret Service is going to come from? That's right, taxes. Taxes that'll pay for more regulations and more approvals, inspections and insurance, licenses. Quick poll, quick poll. How many of you out there would have an electrician or a plumber or a roofer or truly even anyone who works perhaps in the cable industry? How many of you would have them in your home doing work if they weren't inspected, insured, licensed, and approved by the government. Would you have an unlicensed plumber come in? Start cutting away on pipes? An unapproved, uninsured electrician just snip away, fix this, and plug that. hope that works. I'll plug that in that way, and we'll put this over here, and yeehaw. It's all socialism. And if, oh, if you think groceries, if you think groceries are expensive now... Just wait until they would stop giving subsidies to the farmers. What's a subsidy, Mucky? That's where they take your tax money and they prepay for your groceries. That's right. They give it to the farmer so that the farmer charges less to the grocery store. Now, a long time ago, I told a story about my maternal grandmother who was an old Southern Christian. And she said, you are going to more often be accurately defined by who your enemies are than your friends. Because you can have real friends and you can have fake friends. And sometimes you'll think your real friends are fake and vice versa. They're, they're genuine and they'll become fake. You'll never have, she said, you will never have a fake enemy. You'll never have a disingenuous enemy. Those who don't like you, those who don't like you are going to be 100% genuine with you about that fact. So make sure you have the right enemies. And you can also tell by who has certain friends what they are. Malay, leader of Argentina. Biggest challenge is to foster the societal consensus that Argentina needs to thrive or get rich. Now, I'm not going to bore you with blah 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 on all this article here. But we'll just start. Argentina's Malay government last week received its second blessing from the IMF. For its hard-hitting economic reforms, the lender's executive board agreed to pay out the next of several small disburse, disburse, disbursements that remain under Argentina's 2023 program. Yep, you see, that's what's happening. The IMF is financing Malay. Financing Argentina, and they're going to dollarize. And they're going to get rid of the Argentine peso. And they're going to become a client state, a puppet state of Washington, D.C. And everybody's clapping and saying, see, this is what happens. You get a socialism and you get rid of socialism and there's, there's not as much suffering, really. Why don't you go look around? Any major city in this country, why don't you go look around? We have more empty houses and empty apartments and empty hotels than we have homeless people in this country, but still they sit on the side of the road in their tents and their shanty towns and their encampments. And they look at all of the empty houses and all of the empty apartments and all of the empty hotel rooms. And they just have to say, well, gosh, I guess I'm just not a good enough capitalist. I guess I'm just not a good enough capitalist. So as women are being abused and beaten, and raped in homeless encampments every night, every day, from now till 
the Lord returns. You can pat yourself on the back for, oh, I'm not a socialist. I'm not a socialist. And even worse, even worse, we have women in this country that instead of letting their kids live in a tent city, instead of letting their kids be indoctrinated by public schools, they have decided to swallow some pride and do things they never thought they had to do to put food on the table and actually have a table, a table in an air-conditioned or heated environment, clothes on the back of their kids. And they give up their own self-respect to do that. That's what is going on in America, in fantastic, wonderful, free market capitalist America. They're young. They're old. They're in the West. They're in the East. Some of them are nurses. Some of them are administrative assistants. Some of them are teachers. Some of them did it all all right. Some of them did it all right. They did everything they were supposed to do. And they're facing evictions, facing repossessions. And they've had to do some of the most humiliating, disgusting things in front of cameras just to survive. And those who aren't having to do that, they're not having kids. They're not having kids. They lay awake at night. How are we going to get our credit card debt? We are never going to have a house. We're going to live in this apartment for the rest of our lives. And we're going to both work full time to do that, just to have our apartment. And it ain't socialism that does this. It's capitalism. You know, good old capitalism that gives us that that military that everybody's terrified of. All those taxes that they collect say we need 29 aircraft carriers and dozens and dozens and dozens of destroyers just to go sail over in front of China because we can because it's freedom of navigation operations. Yeah, people are terrified of our military. Oh, but whatever you do, whatever you do, don't, don't be terrified of the Venezuelan military. Even though Green Berets went down there and got their ass kicked. See, this is the leader of the Venezuelan military. F-A-N-B, for those of you who are wondering if you ever see it on a Venezuelan uniform, stands for Fuerzas Armadas Nacional Bolivariana. Armed Force, National Armed Forces, Bolivarian Armed Forces. Named after Simon Bolivar. That evil, terrible, horrible socialist that threw off the chains of the Spanish crown. See, they had their own revolution down there that you don't get taught in schools. They taught us that in the military. I was a Spanish linguist. Those who have ever been down there know this story. Who Simon Bolivar was. Now, I didn't want to involve the Patriot Nurse in this video, but I think it is time to. She did a video some time ago, might be a couple years now, where she talked to her grandmother and her grandfather. God rest their souls. And in the video where she talked to her grandfather, he talked about growing up in the Depression era. And he related some facts that if you listen to them, you go, oh, wow, that's you, you would fall into a state of nostalgia. But if you listened to the actual facts, something would hit you like a ton of bricks that would knock you out of your emotional state and make you question capitalism. Now, I listened to this and got the closed caption going. Everything that is said here, her grandfather said. She was asking him, generally speaking, about his time as a youth. And this is what he related to her. He said, I've sold many a gallon bucket of big red tomatoes for a dime. And I picked blackberries for 15 cents a gallon. You'd give 35 to 40 cents for a dozen eggs, you could buy a pound of coffee for 29 cents. We'd use kerosene for light. You could buy it for 10 cents a gallon. Now everybody's like, wow, good old days, man. Look how how inexpensive they are. Here's the part where everybody listened, but they didn't listen. Talking about his uncle. He drew old age pension of $8 a month, and that's all the money that was coming in that house. $8 a month is 800 cents. 
per month. 800 pennies per month. Now, let's go back. A gallon bucket of red tomatoes is a dime. Let's say you got a five-gallon bucket worth. That's 50 cents. Blackberries, 15 cents a gallon. Let's say you got five gallons of those too, 75 cents. So you're up to a buck and a quarter, frame one. Buck and a quarter, remember that. 35 to 40 cents for a dozen eggs. Pound of coffee for 29 cents. Let's say you'd go through a pound of coffee a week and you'd have uh, two eggs for breakfast every day. So let's see. You'd need 60 eggs, four pounds of coffee. So $2 for the eggs and a buck 20 for the coffee. So three twenty buck and a half, so you have to $4.70. $4.70 for five gallons of tomatoes, five gallons of blackberries, 60 eggs, and four pounds of coffee. And then kerosene, 10 cents a gallon. Now, I'll be very honest with you. I don't know how long a gallon of kerosene lasts for light, to be very honest. But drawing an old age pension of $8, easily provided all of that food and the kerosene with money left over. With money left over. Quick poll. How many people think if they tried to live off government checks right now that they would have enough money to take care of all of their food needs and all of their housing costs and, everything, and have a bunch of money left over just on government funds right now? Not many. Not many at all. In fact, Patriot Nurse is from Tennessee, Knoxville. There was something called the Tennessee Valley Authority back during that era. I'm sure a lot of you might have remembered it from a song by Alabama called High Cotton. Papa got a job with the TVA. We bought a washing machine and a Chevrolet. Oh, that evil, terrible, horrible socialism, which is what the TVA was. It was government-provided jobs. Government jobs. Not for profit. Not to make anybody rich. It was socialism on steroids. And it provided cars and washing machines to people that hadn't had it before. There's a newspaper clipping from that time. Live up to the law. Old age pension. Union convention tells Martin. What will you or your family do when you're too old to work? If you become disabled or if you die. Social Security pays cash in these cases. But keep these two things in mind. You don't get payments unless you've worked long enough. You see, here's the, here's the nasty little secret about socialism that a lot of capitalism lovers don't want to talk about. In Venezuela, you are constitutionally required to work if you can. If you have the ability to work, you have a constitutional duty to work. Period. And nobody is too old for work in Venezuela. If you want a job, you have a constitutional right to a job to work. The amount of your payment depends on how much wages you've reported to Social Security, blah, blah, blah. Everybody knows the story of Social Security. $2.9 trillion wiped out from stocks in a day. As recession fears mount in good old capitalist America. And I'm going to show this picture again because I want you to soak it up and I want you to be ashamed. I'm ashamed. This woman in this picture, teacher, Ohio, graduated high school, went to college, got her teaching degree, 30 years a teacher. 30 years a teacher. She's older than me. In the Ohio school system could not afford to pay her bills, couldn't afford to keep her car, couldn't afford to keep the heat on, on the measly, pathetic $40,000 a year that they paid a teacher with 30 years experience in Ohio. So yeah, you know what she had to do? Go get herself some pricey underpants and start taking pictures and putting them online on OnlyFans. But please, by all means, continue to send money to the billionaire 
with the crystal chandeliers and the gold encrusted entranceways in Mar-a-Lago, the man who owns 39 golf courses. Please continue to send him money because he needs it. And continue to waggle your high and mighty fingers at people forced to do some of the most humiliating things to feed themselves and to keep their family inside and not living on the street. Oh, and by all means, whatever you do, continue to demonize the man who stood before the UN praying to Jesus, to God. He said, give me your crown, Jesus. Give me your cross and your thorns so that I may bleed, but give me life because I have more to do for this country and these people. Yeah, this soldier and this bus driver, they're the enemies of the whole world. They're the enemies. If there, were, if there weren't soldiers and bus drivers in socialism, the, the clouds would roll away and bluebirds would sing and it'd be sunshiny and prices everywhere would drop. It's delusional. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a country song. Ban Perry. You lie like the priceless rug, Persian rug, on the rich man's floor, or like the man with the slicked back hair that sold me that Ford. Ought to kill you right now and do the whole wide world a service. And I guess I'll leave with this. To the church of Laodicea, Revelation 3. And under the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Who does that sound like? I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, it continues, I counsel thee to buy of me, to buy of me, gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. Now, some might say, gold tried in the fire. As gold is tested by fire, so is human character tested in the furnace of humiliation. As gold is purified in the furnace, so the faithful heart is purified by sorrow. So when I see someone humiliating themselves for the benefit of someone else, their children, their families, I have a spot in my heart for them. They have to go to the grocery store, spend that money, so the next morning their kids think everything is fine. Yeah, I got a spot in my heart for those people. There are those that I don't have a spot in my heart for. Elon Musk's of the world. The Jeff Bezos's of the world. The Bill Gates of the world. The Donald Trump's of the world. No. No. I've got no spot in my heart for these people who beg money. Who beg money, and he does. Who beg money of people that are truly struggling and suffering and having to tighten the belt and go without while this man won't even sell one of his golf courses to pay his bills. He'd rather beg the money of you. He'd rather beg the money of you. Too big to fail. Has everybody forgotten? Has everybody forgotten? Christian socialism founded this country. Christian socialism was directly antithetical to kings and queens and the ruling class. It's what we have now. Kings, queens, and a ruling class. And they've convinced you that mammon worship, capitalism, potato, potato, same thing, that mammon worship is patriotic. while bragging about how much oil this country has that is going to enrich a very few people in charge of corporations. And you applaud it. 
and you decry anyone trying to stand against it or stop it. Because all the people who cry, we're not a democracy, we're a republic, we're not a democracy, we're a republic, all of a sudden now have some interest in mob rule. It's just unbelievable. If you want to know why I talk about Battlefield of the Mind, why I talk about the Patreon channel, Psychological Operations, you have a command of Psychological Operations in your mind, you won't be fooled. You won't be fooled by billionaires and the ruling class and the media and big oil. Every time they roll out this sad, stupid old story about how oh, he cheated, he cheated again, he closed the polling places, and we have the good. They can gin up anything they want. Haven't you learned this? The largest proven reserves of crude oil, by far outstripping Saudi Arabia, Venezuela. What do you think their motivation is? You think they give a rat's ass about the financial well-being of 30 million Venezuelans? We want to bring Venezuela capitalism and wealth and rising tide lifting all boats and trickle down and... You think they give one rat's ass about anybody in South America? They don't even want them coming to the damn border. Why in the world would you think they would want to go down there and deliver democracy and freedom to... Are you really that stupid? Are you really that stupid? Is my question. Look around. Look around at your own country. And get a good gander. I hope it does make people feel ashamed. I hope it does make people feel uncomfortable. The idea of women in their 60s and 70s running around in their skivvies in front of a camera for God knows who all over the world for a buck, three bucks, five bucks, ten bucks a shot so that they can go to the grocery store. That's what capitalism got you. That's what capitalism got you. Childless marriages. You want to talk about the new VP talking about childless women and child... Lot, I know lots of married folks can't afford it. Can't afford it. Keep yapping about the military. You're going to read articles about the resurgence in recruiting. That's a resurgence in recruiting. They're just people so desperate for a paycheck, they'll do anything. Including join the military. Oh, but by all means. By all means, let's continue to make fun and point fingers at the socialist military. And let's, let's not listen to anybody from the, from the era of the Depression Things were better during this man's childhood than they are now. I want you to soak that up for a minute. Things were better during this man's childhood in the 1930s than they are right now. And it was one of the most socialist times this country ever experienced. Facts. Patriot nurse, if you see this, you're out there. Sorry, I... The story is just too emblematic to have ignored. And the reason I brought up this picture, upper right, forgot to mention it, her grandfather also mentioned that her uncle sold his shoe stamp. Florida Maquis, what's a shoe stamp? Well, you see, not only did you have to have the money to buy a pair of shoes, you also had to have a shoe stamp so that you could have your authorized ration of shoes. Now, there was also a black market. And if didn't need the shoes, somebody else did, you could sell your stamp. And there was a big effort to stamp out those, what we would call the free market, they called the black market. Because you weren't supposed to be doing that. That was yours. And when he was a kid, his uncle, and this is according to her, she, you can watch the video, his uncle sold for money his shoe stamp because he didn't need a pair of shoes. Black market. Look up the Tennessee Valley Authority. Or just listen to the song. A washing machine and a Chevrolet. That's a good job back then. That was a real good job. 
2.9 trillion in a day. It's just horrible. It is just horrible what's going on now in this country. And to watch people to cry Venezuela, it's hilarious. We have women that, that, I guess I shouldn't repeat it at this point. It's just so, as an American, it's embarrassing. If you'd have told me in the 1980s when I was in high school that this would be going on, that the teachers I had back then, that the teachers I had back then, by the time I was in my 50s, would be so destitute and impoverished that they would be forced into doing this, I would have laughed. Battlefield of mine. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.